Today I show you how to travel to and explore a volcanic windswept landscape dotted with lakes of lava and an atmosphere significantly higher than Drew's. This is Sergia. Before we launch our spacecraft to go to Sergia, let's talk a little bit about the planet itself. Sergia is the second furthest planet from the star Juno. It's a rocky planet with a thick atmosphere. Sergia's radius is 1036 kilometers, and it has a surface gravity of 8 meters per second squared. Therefore, it's relatively comparable to Drew in its radius and surface gravity, though Drew has slightly higher numbers on both of those. One of the things that is definitely not comparable to Drew with is its atmosphere, which is 323 kilometers high, which is almost three times higher than Drew's atmosphere. Depending on the time of day, the atmosphere becomes either green or a nice purple colour, and Sergia is actually also volcanically active. It has lava lakes and active and inactive volcanoes. I would also point out with the parallax mod enabled, we can see that the rocks on the ground have shiny bits on them, and they're also kind of glass-like in my opinion, so I'm not exactly sure if the shiny bits are metal or if they're some sort of glass. It's hard to tell. Now, how are we going to get to Sergia? Well, Sergia is actually one of the easiest planets to land on in the game, not only due to its proximity to Drew, but also because it has a super thick and high atmosphere. Therefore, you can imagine the easiest method to land on Sergia is to use its atmosphere to our advantage, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. You can also do other methods of landing, such as propulsively landing if you have a super heavy payload, but air braking and parachutes are going to be our main use today because the atmosphere is so thick at the lower altitudes that it doesn't really matter if we use engines. And we can even land without parachutes in some cases. The Delta V requirements for Sergia are as follows. Bear in mind these are a high estimate, so they are going to be higher than the actual amount you'll probably need. For a flyby, it's going to be 6,400 meters a second. For an orbit, 7,400. And for landing, 12,150. So with that knowledge, let's launch ourselves to Sergia. We're going to want to launch to the east and head up to low Drew orbit. Now that we're in low Drew orbit, we're going to unfold the solar panels on our space habitat, and we're going to get ready to set up our maneuver node to head to Sergia. First of all, I'm going to go into the map view and select Sergia. Then I'm going to set up a maneuver node at Drew, and we will tweak the placement of this maneuver node as we set it up. Next, we're going to start extending our maneuver node out towards Sergia, and once we tweak its position, we will eventually see that we encounter Sergia. You could of course make this much more efficient by waiting until Sergia is super close to Drew, but you can obviously encounter Sergia anywhere in its orbit as long as you set up the maneuver correctly. So once our maneuver is set up, we're going to lock the maneuver node, hit the engine button and time warp to the maneuver. Now we simply need to time warp until we get to Sergia and we have completed our Sergia flyby. Next we're going to time warp until we get to the periapsis of the Sergia flyby. We're going to burn in retrograde and now we have Sergia orbit. Finally, we have the landing. This part is actually relatively easy as well. We're going to cut our orbit down until we get to about 400 kilometers. And then once we have a stable orbit, we're going to cut down into 300 and even as low as 200, but you can even go lower than this if you want kilometers. And we're going to use the atmosphere to our advantage to slow us down massively. And we won't even need to use parachutes or engines to slow ourselves down during this period. You shouldn't need a heat shield if you're lucky, but in some cases with heavier crafts you may want a heat shield. Now we're going to time warp through the atmosphere because it takes forever to descend through Sergia's thick atmosphere. And once we get lower in the atmosphere we're going to try and deploy parachutes. And we're going to try and use these parachutes to land. Unfortunately mine broke and I had to land on the landing gear, but it worked out fine. And there we have it, we have actually landed on Sergia. Now let's talk about the points of interest on Sergia. First of all we have Hathor Mons. Its description reads, the largest active volcano in the system, very steep and hard to climb, but even harder to escape once you descend into its crater. And as you can see, it indeed has a very deep crater. Next is Horus Mons. The mountains near Hathor Mons are the result of one of the largest eruptions of the volcano. They offer an easier to climb terrain and a great viewing spot to plan your descent into the crater. Next is the Jade Crown. Sergia has a large portion of its surface covered in large obsidian spikes, three of which have formed a large crown, with some of the most surreal panoramas surrounding it. Nidra Devi Mons. This volcano has been dormant for a millennia, but its crater is almost intact. It may not have the lava inside, but descending into the bottom and coming back intact is still a challenge. And finally we have Morgan Island, an island in the shape of a crescent moon on one of the largest lava lakes on Sergia. 
Hell's version of Hawaii, surrounded by magma and obsidian spikes. So that does it for all the locations and this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, I'd like to thank our members, Systematic Souls, Pazak and Karnasa for supplying the funding for the music you can hear during the video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.